Hey y'all, Wiggle here. It's been a while. Springtime gets busy, you know, and videos are kind of like this. I did rototill this. This was an old pile of um, just hay manure mix, old compost, and it just been sitting for a long time. It's, so we scraped it up, moved it around, rototilled it a little bit. This stuff is there. You know, miles of That's fresh, fresh like it's very good but that's actually pretty black it's just all that clay and it's not even red clay now it's kind of grayish brownish clay anything that's on top kind of melts and it kind of looks like it's all clay but it's it's, it's dark underneath of that it's just the way it worked out and you can see some spinach popping up it's a kale whatever else we planted so this we're kind of on the uh north and east side of uh, these trees this group of trees here so uh, we're getting some sun through here now uh, but there's no leaves on yet so this is going to be a heavy shade area so putting greens in nothing that requires a fruiting of anything flowers or anything like that all this leafy greens just due to it it's going to be so shady over here now we do it does have a really nice morning exposure which is kind of over these trees this way so you know half a day approximately or less but we're going to get some good light and then it'll be shade it'll be shaded from the first west later in the day all that heat be nice and cool so there's kind of the old level right there that kind of road we left in place there's a little strawberry patch we put in so that's the potato patch we are working on and you know about halfway up you can see the crest breaks some of it's going that way and some of it's coming back this way so this is as bad as it gets in Virginia putting a garden up on top of the ridge least amount of help with groundwater running down or anything like that pretty much reliant only on rain but coming down this way it's actually kind of a moisture trap it's kind of in a little valley here this part I kind of put in a valley see if you're the car is parked and um, the tank is put on the highest land but there is water that starts coming down here and it kind of accumulates a little road right there will accumulate some water and it's going to soak into these beds. I also have water coming in over there next to that building that I'm bringing in. Trying to get all that water coming down the hill into this garden. And I'm actually, it's wanting to go out in front of that little sliding door over there. What I'm wanting to do is bring that water out the edge of the garden here. And I'm going to put in a little um, swale here and a terrace kind of already has the terrace the high part of the hill along you can see down where that piece of trash is the other side of that branch that's kind of where the water wants to go out anyway so I'm going to try to build this all up right through here and not let the water cut across grade I'm going to try to push it uphill as far as I can I'm going to put some trees right in here which will be for screening and like you know black locust to make lumber uh, make uh, posts out of have posts growing and cut them off you know coppice and then let it sprout back some sprout and then just keep keep growing a uh, post that way nice straight posts and so forth so my water hopefully will be leaving down there so all the water coming down this hill kind of see that ditch i'm going to try to keep it all in here it's wanting to cut out right on the other side of that gate but we're going to try to build that up and push it push it all down here and then that water will pretty much take 
go back to the, you know, it'll run back kind of down this way, I think. We'll see. That's kind of a hump over there, so it's going to hopefully run to the left where it's still kind of lush, you see. I have already killed one of those cherries because I've changed the way the water comes across the land. So they're getting starved out over there. They were used to a lot of water and now they're not getting it. I expect all those cherries might die and probably that maple not going to make it. It was not looking great anyway. I cut a bunch of roots. It was not looking great before I started on it. So now I've cut off a lot of its water, cut off a lot of its roots. That maple's going to die on this. Before. This is, we're gonna put in a nice uh, gravel walk here up and then we'll have some papers up there by the building. This is the main, main entrance here coming from this little, what I call the acre lot. So when I get these, um, kind of a tangent, but working on these trailers, I'm gonna take my logs, cut them up and make them pretty like the idea is kind of that thing there, that little, but I'm going to have it wrapped completely in barn board so it'll look pretty instead of ugly. That's just plywood. So I'm going to just, I have two there. I have one behind a small one. My new acquisition, this ugly thing, but I'm going to do the same thing with that. And then I have, those are like tiny rooms. Then these other trailers all turn into tiny homes on wheels using all that lumber over there. So I've been getting some logs. So got some pine, got some oak. Mostly got a little bit of cedar, a little bit of apple, but mostly pine and oak. So I gotta cut all that stuff up. So anyway, the, here's the potato patch. Uh, we did have some pretty heavy frost and all that, but I don't think it hurt the potatoes I dug them up. They're not rotting. It is nice and moist, but it's not rotting them out, and they didn't freeze. So uh, we'll see. I overseeded it with some uh, just radish, daikon radish, just threw a whole bunch of seed out there. I threw some peas out there too, just field peas. So we'll see what comes up. Kind of on the other side of that wire, it'll be all leafy greens back in there. So this is all new garden this year. And again, it's uh, we use the black finished compost as the soil and then the unfinished compost as the material to hold it in place. The black stuff is going to be carbon rich, unfortunately. This fresher stuff has enough nitrogen in it, I think. So I'm hoping that, one, I will start having a, a whole lot of compost breaking down quickly because when it's piled real thick, it takes years to break down. It only gets down six or eight inches, and then the older and deeper it is, it just sits down there and it doesn't get any oxygen, so it's just sitting there, not doing anything. Do putting that unfinished compost in these piles like this, it's going to let the air and the moisture get in there, and let the bug, uh, all the soil web of life, and all that. I didn't destroy the soil; I just kind of piled it on top. I did use the tiller a little bit, but I really didn't get deep or anything. I just used it to kind of help me loosen up. To this top layer and just so I can rake it. So I'm hoping to speed up the composting process quite a bit because it's going to let water and air in there while I'm growing in it. So I'm basically growing in a compost bed. I have an older bed. I had an older video where this is just a giant pile of compost. It's doing nothing. It's doing nothing. Just sitting there taking up land. I mean it is making compost but I'd rather put the land to use. So this is kind of my plan. And we did bring all this newer stuff in. This, well, actually a lot of it, this we used what we had. We actually brought the, what we would call the soil in. Cut holes in it, cut trenches in the existing compost and trucked in this fertility, mostly from over there. So I kind of just spread some of this over there and some of that back over here. And just did as much as I could, just shuffling stuff around. Trying to get some food growing while making a, a whole bunch of compost. So that's that. Let me walk you over here. Let me show you my. Uh... Oh, well. All right. Hold on. Been working on this today. 
This guy's bringing in logs, we're having a hard time. I just had this fence panel sitting here, so I'm making gates out of them. Or gate panels. So I've been digging today, widening the driveway so a semi can easily get in here. Around. Telephone pole cut it in half. That's about four feet down, three and a half feet down. I really dug it. Can you dig it? So I'm moving the fence. The fence was run over here by these Osage Orange. That's where the old fence was. There's a maintenance problem. I want to get everything in the pasture. So I want to greatly reduce what's outside. I am going to leave these wild blackberries to grow. So I'm going to get this tamped in. It's pretty solid. And then get this tea post in. Here. I'm going to put another gate here for when, like I'm grazing over here, I don't want the animals to get over here. This is two separate paddocks, so I got to have a gate, plus people coming into this gate. This is a secondary gate from my front yard, so this is a, a barrier. This is more of a public area here, more of a private area over here, so I'm going to put in another gate. That's why I have that fence post. Further, I got this kind of weird little area that's not being used much. So I am going to put panels up because I took all this out. I don't really need it. I'm just going to, that post will be the corner and I'm getting rid of this fence because it just, I don't need it anymore. It's the way I had things. The garden now separates. This fence is doing the job that this fence is doing. So I'm just taking it out. So these panels I'm going to repurpose in this corner here. As you can see, we kind of got this weird little corner. So I'm going to fence this whole thing off. It's just not being used. It's a very little bit of grazing. Again, top of the ridge, not a whole lot of moisture. You can see there is a little bit of tender stuff there, but it's more of a, a little clover. And then it's a little shady. I'm going to put nothing but comfrey in here and sunflowers later. It's still too early. I'll put a, a couple of rows of sunflowers in front of that fence. But I'm going to bring my comfrey over here and I'm going to have comfrey growing all the time. Like a little comfrey paddock excluded from the grazers. But then when the comfrey is tall enough, I'll open up the panels, let the grazers in. They can wipe out the comfrey. I'll chase them back out and let the comfrey regrow. So hopefully I'll get four or five um, rotations on there and, and get some comfrey and then I'll have uh, more plants to move other places. I really want to use comfrey to help uh, have a lot more grazing on the land. I'm also going to start coppicing with trees, um, pear trees, mulberry trees, black locusts. black locust. I got these Osage horns. Anyway, I could do it. That's another story. Anyway, I want to, I'm actually going to try to get all of this, not probably this year, but if I can get this all comfrey and coppice trees, where it's just like stumps with sprouts and they come and eat all that and then I, I'll get a lot more out of this pasture. Again, I read here. That's will like it and trees will like it and it'll be like a little bit like silver pasture but I'll be used coppice trees and comfrey so that's part of my plan to stay. I've got way too many animals on way too little land but it's part of my part of my deal because I'm trying to you know, fertility as fast as I can you need the animals big fan of the cattle even if you don't like to eat them you can use them to make lots and lots of compost they do a year's worth of composting in a day they eat the grass put it out and forward that way. here's my other project uh, extra slabs from the sawmill that's the one I did of course I picked the best material looks pretty nice I like it so that's a, a screen from that area over there where the trailers are. 
over here I'll be putting a gate I'll be putting a smaller gate here I'm actually going to repurpose that gate over to there and put a smaller gate there um, this is what my boys did and kind of cobbled together they used what they had we're going to redo it and make it look prettier but here's why I walked over here I'm going to show you my compost bin so this has three sections to it and this is the old fence we just, where I just cut the fence and wrapped it around just reused the fence I already had so have a roof on it use a little store-bought lumber up here repurposed a lot of tin anyway I could have done a lot of work to put a screen and doors and hinges and I just did this so there's my my stuff we don't have a huge need for a compost bed here bin we just need to put like citrus and avocado which is poisonous to chickens um, citrus peels um, eggshells you don't want the chickens eating that stuff you don't want the chickens to eat uh, coffee grounds there's a lot of other ways to use this stuff I understand it's just this is more of like just us managing our trash and stuff that we don't want to actually get put in the trash stream we're going to put it in here and let it sit and this little small bin it might seem undersized but for what we do here it's going to last a long long time it, we'll probably won't even fill that thing up in here maybe we will and then I just use screws you can just pop these screws out of each section and then dig the stuff out so the plan is just to use one section at a time let that one sit fill that one fill that one when that one's getting full take this one out pull it out and use it put it in the garden which is right behind me so you don't have to go far with it and I'm also going to saw mill cut some more boards I'm going to bring those boards over this way I'm going to close this little triangle off again this was high ridge area least useful for anything but like keeping chickens in it or something the top of the ridge is not really where you want to do that's more where you want to park your cars or put your animals and let the fertility run downhill from them and trees it's good for trees but it's also good for structures so that's why this is up here this little shady area it was just kind of a trashy it looked like that i mean just catching just a little weird area that was catching everything so i'm going to turn it into my trash handling area so there's going to be a gate the fence and a gate that's going to be wrapped in barn board here or just oak slabs from the, this whole thing will be just enclosed and I'm going to just have a gate here you can see my other gate there and we'll put all of our recycling and trash cans in here so we'll store up our trash and our recycling until it's time to take it and we work really hard to not generate much so it, I could do it like once a year if I had to because we don't generate much trash we burn a lot of our cardboard and paper and so it's a lot of like plastic bags and nasty stuff you don't really want to recycle we just throw that in the trash we could probably recycle even that but certain stuff we just want to just throw it away and get rid of it so this is part of that here and this fence is for me and my my house back there and then this gate here will be for over there so this is kind of the centralized area they'll come through the gate I showed you they'll come over here come through this other gate handle their trash and recycling and it's full I'll just back up right kind of where that car is see and just back in here and, and get it and do what I need to do now this is that ditch I was showing you where the water I had water trying to run through the building so we keep building it up we're gonna bring the water it's running out right there what happened the far gate down there I had just shaped all this beautiful it looked really nice and smooth just exactly graded the boys left the gate open so we had all this rain and of course the cows come up here and just trample it to death and it's like they ruined it now it's hardened and it's ugly and misshapen Ugh. Keep the cows out of your wet clay is the moral of the day, moral of the story. 
So anyway, this water is kind of leaving right there. I want to get it going off to the right, like I said, down over that way, other side of that telephone pole, pouring out that way. And then we'll put, this is going to all get pavers just right around this area. And then pressure rock, you know, real fine gravel, gravel finds. That when you walk on it, kind of stamps it down, it almost turns into like concrete. So that'll be nice to do there, and it's a little softer than uh, the hardscaping, you know, the, the papers, a little less money too. So, when I get this cleaned out, picnic table there, so you can sit here, come out of the off-grid, as I pan too quickly, I'm sorry. This is the off-grid kitchen, that's the off-grid bathroom, so you can cook here, come out on the, and, and sit here and eat under the tree, and I'll put two two picnic tables and again there'll be a fence there and a gate again private private there private here and when you sit here you'll have a nice view of the pond pretty nice view of the property we got a little cleaning up to do and get this old chicken coop out of the way but this will be a pretty nice place to sit at the picnic table so that's the plan for that uh, I'm going to take you over and show you my coffee real quick